I... Oceanside 70.3, a very solid day. Uh, we came out here a few weeks before to do some training, uh, enjoy the town of Oceanside, which we love coming out to. And the leader was really good. We always love the vibe of this town and I just felt confident and pretty happy going into this race. Knew I had made some good improvements over Miami 70 point, or the Clash Miami race, um, not a 70.3, uh, just a little bit shorter. But this one I felt like the swim was starting to get up there a little bit. Bike power was looking good and the run was just stacking more and more workouts. So it felt like each week I was getting a little bit faster and was just excited to test myself against a good field. And it was definitely strong and guys were starting their season here, checking their fitness before their final block to St. George. Um, and some other guys like, um, like a Jackson Laundry were in Miami and now coming to Oceanside to continue their season. Um, so yeah, I guess the, the morning of, uh, we had a perfect day for it. It was overcast, a little chilly. The wind was present, but not overly there, um, until, you know, kind of well into the bike ride. Um, but the waves were looking good. It was, um, the ocean I would say was somewhat calm, but there was a pretty decent sets coming in. So it was kind of perfect for an ocean swim where, um, you can get out under the waves, but it also wasn't like wrecking you in between the waves coming and crashing right before you. So um, I lined up to the right hand side, um, kind of near where Alistair Brownlee, um, Sam Appleton, some of those guys were. And we had a bit of a weird start. They said 50 minutes minute, or 50 seconds to the start. And um, we were just kind of sitting there waiting, expecting a on your marks and then the horn but the horn just sounded, so got off into the water and got out pretty clean. Um, beach starts are kind of 50-50 for me sometimes. I've gotten better at them and actually got out pretty well, was one of the first guys to kind of dive in and get away from everybody else, um, and honestly did not feel great. Um, warm up just didn't really take super well to the first buoy, did not feel fantastic. Actually, one guy cut straight across though, because when you're going out, you can't quite see the buoys. And, um, but really, when I was getting out, after the guy cut across me, um, I found my right line, despite the buoys and the lifeguards kind of looking similar. 
um, I was straight and I was leading um, and was actually kind of surprised because I wasn't feeling my best and rounded that first buoy and just decided to build into the swim. And I guess by the time we hit that buoy in the harbor, I had gotten going pretty well because we had a gap. After the race, I talked with Alistair and um, I was kind of surprised nobody came around me, but he said by that point, I was moving pretty well in the swim. So um, they just all kind of tucked in and maybe we were lacking a little bit of speed and would have liked to have gone a bit faster, but overall it was a pretty fast swim, um, just kind of being able to pick it up in the second half. And we came out with a group of about eight-ish guys, eight to 10, I would say. Eventually, you know, got through transition pretty quick out onto the bike and Alistair Brownlee came around me a couple minutes in and he started putting the hammer down a little, which I was happy with because the first part of the Oceanside course is kind of twisty turny and it's not easy to put down any power consistently and break up the group until you get out onto the course a little bit. Uh, and I kind of knew that key section and kind of just waited and let Alistair and even Sam Appleton put in, and I think Rudy saw the front once, um, put in some efforts through about 10 miles or so after the 180, um, just a little out and back section. Um, once we got onto the bike path slash old road that is out on the course, it's kind of a false flat. You can really put in some good power. There's no, there wasn't really any wind at that section. Um, so everybody was feeling probably the same amount of um, effort, I would say overall. So I went to the front to push to kind of get some stragglers off the back. Um, and I believe that got us down to me, Alistair Brownlee, Sam Appleton, Rudy Von Berg, and then Jackson Laundry. And we whittled our way down to that five um, for pretty much the rest of the bike. And Alistair did a big amount of work. I traded off and Sam Appleton did a lot too. Um, I tried to kind of just do my piece there and, and shelled some of the guys at the back. Um, but then I tried to just sit in a little bit and rest up for what I knew would be a quick run. Um, still probably rode maybe a little hard, but I didn't really feel it at the time because I was feeling pretty solid on the bike. Um, you'll see coming soon that we did a bike fit um, video that takes place at the wind tunnel. And you'll see some of the changes that we made to the bike or the process we went through to find a little bit of extra speed. And honestly, um, the new piece that's in a patent pending by Psychologic um, that we put on the bike helped me feel super comfortable and stable and get into a more aero and powerful position. So I was just really psyched about the bike. I didn't feel like I was overdoing it anywhere, um, but it still was relatively taxing. And I knew that I would have some solid run legs, but just wasn't quite sure exactly um, how I would do just this early in the season with um, not the full amount of training that I would probably like against this caliber of field. And as we're coming into transition, I found out that um, Lionel was about 220 back and we had a solid group of guys and I was just ready to go. I had finally kind of recuperated um, and was just ready to get out on the run. And in talking with some people, you know, this was, I, I'd won this race the past two years and it was, I just always found myself out of T2 first and I did again. So um, that was still kind of stretching out. I've, I've led a lot of the runs that I've done here and coming out of T2, I was really fired up, um, rode with the front group, still feeling good, felt really good in that first mile and set the pace. Um, and Alistair, first it was Rudy who caught me within the first mile and was hanging on there. And honestly, I thought his breathing sounded more labored than mine. Um, so felt still pretty solid. And then Alistair caught us and he took the lead and just tightened the screws a little bit. Um, and felt like I could hang for the most part, um, especially up the pier. I felt like I ran that section a little bit better and I ran the downhill section better than everybody in our group and came around first. But on the flat section, I was missing that little bit of speed and I paid pretty close attention to my run power and was right in a zone where I should be. Um, they were running probably a little bit higher and it was just a risk I knew on this course to go with them with my current fitness and part of me wanted to go and just kind of throw caution to the wind and um, see how long I'd last. But I also had in the back of my mind that I could maintain the pace I was running right now pretty well, which was similar to past years. 
and the Oceanside course can catch up with you. And I've seen people blow up pretty big after trying to run it hard early on. And so I just kind of let them slowly go. Um, I mean, honestly, like they kind of pulled away from me rather than me just letting them go. It's kind of 50 50, but um, just felt like I was running solid. Didn't feel like I was overextending, but didn't really feel fantastic. And that was just basically the, the pace that stuck with me that entire run. And was almost able to watch out the whole race unfold ahead of me uh, at the different turnarounds. Um, Alistair, Jackson, and Rudy ran really strong, um, and they had their own battle up front. Meanwhile, uh, I was watching Lionel Sanders, who I thought was running well, but I didn't know that he was running so well because I thought that I had enough gap on him, and if I was racing those guys up front, I'd be good. Um, but he caught me in the last mile and a half and was just flying on the run. Um, Jason West as well. Um, I thankfully had a big gap coming off the bike because he was also flying like uh, Lionel was. They both ran in the 108s, which is really pretty quick on the Oceanside course. Um, I ended up, you know, right about what I usually run on this course, right about a 111. Um, while those guys up front, we saw Alistair Brownlee, he did blow up, not feeling his best on the day. And that's kind of what I thought would happen. I was just a little bit too far back for it. Um, and then Rudy maybe faded a little bit off the pace, but he held strong enough to have a good sprint with Lionel. So um, honestly, this reminded me a little bit of um, the 2018 70.3 World Championships in South Africa, where I ran well. Um, it just wasn't good enough for the guys up front on that day. And like I said, I'm early in the season, um, still have a lot to build, a lot to gain on it. And I did the same exact time that I did in October, which I felt like coming off of 70.3 Worlds in St. George, this was actually, again, very similar. I swam and biked at the front and did fairly well on those, got off and just ran a strong, steady run, but didn't have that extra gear pop that it takes to be on the podium at a very competitive race. Um, but then we had that six extra weeks or five extra weeks of training for the October um, Oceanside 70.3 in 2021. And I had probably one of my stronger races of the year. So we're already at that point that I felt like I was at in October. So I feel like this is a good spot for me to be in. Um, definitely some stuff to improve on have more than a few weeks now before my next races and the most important races are coming kind of mid to end of year so yeah i think that you know it's it's one of those where i look and there's not much more i could have done on the day i played my cards really well uh strategically i feel that i played the course well um it just sucks to finish fifth and you know i think that that's both good and bad that I'm thinking that way because it's to the point where I'm in my career where I want to win races and I want to win big races, which this was a big race with a, a really strong start list. Um, but also I know fifth is is pretty solid for, for this course um, and for this field. So um, it's another kind of one of those bittersweet races where I'm just at the cusp. So yeah, I mean, Good solid day, but definitely looking for more in the coming weeks and months. And um, yeah, just kind of stick along. Uh, we definitely have that wind tunnel video coming out, which I'm really excited about because we try and give you all the data and just take you along on like the tests that we ran out there. And then um, we have just, you know, more training stuff planned to along the way. So thanks. And uh, just again, if you if you do have a race that you want to do, we love the town of Oceanside. Always love this race. And you'll probably see us out here training a lot more.